Metal Voice today on the show. First time, David DeFay from Virgin Steel. How you doing? And of course, Giles, my buddy. Greetings. How greetings. Doing? Nice to be here. Nice to be here. All right. So uh, the good news is there's a new album coming out. It's coming out on June the 30th on Steam Hammer SPV, The Passion of Dionysus. Yeah, Passion of Dionysus, some say. Dionysus. I say Dionysus. I say Dionysus. You may say Dionysus. Say you, don't, say you, you, know, you know, David, you don't make it easy for people who are like <laughs> pronunciation challenged. <laughs> <laughs> It's in all Greek, right. it all in Greek it's Dionysus, okay. so that's how you pronounce it. So I, it's, you know, depends. Yeah, yeah, see, si. yeah. All right, okay. And, oh, I guess, like, right off the bat, you know, congratulations. Uh, it's been eight years. Eight years. Uh, no, it actually, it's been eight years since the Nocturnes of Hellfire and Damnation Elves. It was actually only almost five years now. We released, a lot of people don't know this. But in that Seven Devils Moonshine box that we did, there were three brand new records in there released all at once. So it wasn't quite eight years. We did a lot of other things besides that. Yeah. But that's not like a lot of people think uh, that's all just old stuff because we did the uh, Book of Burning reissue and Hymns to Victory. So that kind of like went over everyone's uh, head, unfortunately. So it's my job on this uh, on this. Uh, Dionysus, Dionysus record to correct that. <laughs> Set the record straight. Well, yeah. I mean, it's again like like every Virgin Steel record. This is not something you can just. This is not an ACDC record where you can just chuck it on a couple of times and get a pretty good feel for what it's all about. It takes many listens. You got to dig into the lyrics, everything. I don't have a physical copy. I've just got the promo. Um, okay. What can you tell it? What can you tell us about this new record? The concept, musically. Sure. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Uh, well, Dionysus is a character that I've always enjoyed uh, for a long, long time, as far as I can remember. Uh, he comes with the wine. He brings um, relief from trouble and whatnot, but he also has a, a dangerous element, which I really enjoy, because too much of the wine, and you can become murderous, and uh, humanity goes out the window. Mm, so it right. deals with this duality, this dual nature. Uh, and it also deals with mainly the idea of freedom and restraint and is there room in our society for the letting go aspects of, of our nature the wild side you know one of the names of dionysus is the uh, uh is the god of letting go so um science has concluded that even rats need escape from absolute reality so if rats certainly do i think we do so i'm a firm believer in that freedom uh to go nuts if you want but with great freedom does come great responsibility so the record deals with these sorts of issues so this is a loose concept right this is this is not like a concept album in the sense that part one part two it's a loose concept following this sort of structure or this idea is that it well it is it is both it also it also discusses when dionysus goes to thebes to uh Honish King Pentheus for uh, not allowing his worship there and what goes on. I mean, it all relates back to what I just said, but it has, you know, there is sort of a uh, through line that you can follow on the other side as well. But that being said, and de it deals with dualities where one, one thing on the surface is what you're looking at, it, you see one, one item, but then it's also has its um, polar opposite meaning at the same moment so there's that going on and there's that story there's what i just said but there's also another underlying story as well which the listeners gotta work out for themselves what what that actually is i keep it you know keep it keep it vague so that you can Don't tell see anything. your own life uh, even on like a house of atrius or anything and any uh, any album where i delved into myth i'm always also speaking about what's going on on the street today current events was going in my life as well so this it's all related right mm -hmm. right what about so i see the uh i'm gonna pronounce this it's a pronunciation thing here the githesin the githi samine if effect which is the garden the olive garden right the the, the that's oh, yeah, jesus I mean, christ yeah 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 i, yeah, I mean okay, i can't so pronounce it but it is is where jesus sort of like was sort of where judas came to him and and sort of ratted him out back to the rats, right? So ratted him out, and boom, yeah. he's off to be crucified. Is that exactly what you're talking about, or is it a loose kind of thing there? 
here's what's going on on the record also. There is Dionysus, Jesus, that Jesus is the last in line to quote Ronnie James Dio in a long line of dying and resurrecting God men. So what I've done on the record is I've cross pollinated and synthesized all the various myths of the dying, resurrecting God men because they all are speaking about the same being, basically, same idea. Starts with Osiris, Adonis, Mithra, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so yeah, so I use that Gethsemane. Uh, as the opening, because that's that starts with the great betrayal. I wanted the record to start with the betrayal, and the God is angry, and he's out for blood and vengeance and so on and so forth. So I used that because that may, I thought people could immediately, oh, relate to that, understand that, even if they know nothing about Dionysus, it worked for this for this story. Right. A lot of reading there, uh, Dave. You do a lot of reading. <laughs> <laughs> I was me, me and Giles were scratching our head. This guy reads a lot. <laughs> I do. Meanwhile, we're reading comic books. I mean, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, I discovered the theater. I discovered the myth through the theater. My father was a producer, director, and actor of plays, you know, and uh, he was doing a Greek tragedy. And I, was, I thought, wow, this is amazing. So I started reading. And as I started reading, that led me to reading about history that led me into paganism the occult and so on and so forth and yeah I'm, I'm a student of it all all right so what are the what are the plans to get out there and support this record it's been a little bit of, it's been a while since the last virgin steel live shows correct me if i'm wrong and yeah i've seen but i've seen some announcements for some new dates coming up are you planning to yeah. kind of hit the road in in a very substantial way or just keep it kind of special events festivals and such we're going to be we're working towards a more substantial you know out there touring more. Right. yeah we're doing one-offs for a while now we're doing crete in spain august we've just uh uh we just got news that looks like um italy in november will be on and then uh, we're looking at the dates for greece and germany so it would be putting it all together it will be a longer and longer slog as, as we go. I am trying to make it work for all the other members of the group for the live situation, because not everyone has the freedom that I've got to go and just, you know, I'm just going to run off on an airplane and, and, and shut the door and come back a year later. Uh, it's a little different. So I, try, I want everybody to be um, with me because it is a family thing and I love the guys and I want it all to uh, to work out for them as well. So we're going to take step by step with that. Right. What about cool. the U.S. and Canada? I mean, it's I remember back in the day, you guys, you know, did the tours and I'm in Montreal, right? I remember you guys coming here. I mean, about 85, maybe. Was it 85 you came here? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, we did it. And uh, we. I'd like to do it again. So, yeah, sure. Why not? That would be actually easier because we'd go for the weekend or whatever, come back and so on and so but, forth. But are there, I guess my question is, are there plans for a U.S. or North American dates? It's been a long time. Yeah, plans are afoot. There's nothing I can say that's etched in stone yet, but I am building towards that. I'm speaking and, you know, we're negotiating and trying to make it all work. Okay, so there's a lot of logistics involved, yeah. But we'll, we, we will. We will visit. It's my, it's <laughs> my, uh, it's my dream too, so we'll do it. <laughs> cool, cool. There's been a lot of, uh, I mean, I guess going back in the last 10, 15 years, a lot of reissues, repackaging of the catalog, and, and, you know, quite brilliantly, really. Is there any more plans for anything like that? Or do you feel that the catalog has really been kind of mined about as much as you possibly can with bonus material and, and things like that? Yeah, for the, the bulk of it is, is done, I think, out there. Uh, I think that the label does want to do um, the Black Bacchanalia. They want to do Nocturnes and they want to do the first two records again. So I'm sure oh, wow. I'll be involved with at some point, yeah. And again, I will add new stuff to those records. We never just do one disc. It's always like, you know, a plethora of stuff. So yeah, I, I, you know, if we're gonna do it, we'll do it just like we did the other ones. Yeah. Right. Virgin yeah, Steel no, and Guardian. Different. Yeah, it's, I was gonna say the same thing you were gonna say. I'll, go ahead, Giles, sorry. Well, I was just gonna say, it's been, it's been pretty cool to be a Virgin Steel fan this last, it feels like the last 20 years, we've had more stuff than ever because there's been, you know, yeah. such as the, such as this, and you've got about four billion bonus tracks on every single one, which is awesome. Even the yeah. even the even the likes of Exorcist 
Nightmare Theater, we've got like you know, it's like a three disc set with different remixes. Same with same yeah. with this original sin. Oh, it's yeah. you know if you're if you're into Virgin Steel and the extended, you know, family of projects, family. it's been it's been awesome. Cool, man. I'm glad you I'm glad you appreciate that. Yeah, well, we're maniacs. I'm I'm probably the the the, the main maniac because you know if you give me a reason to be creative, I'll, I'll go, I'll do it. If you give me a reason to write something, I'll, I'll write. I write even when there's no reason to write. I have, I have an abundance of stuff. While I was writing the Dionysus record, I always also wrote what's the, the next record after that and the record after that. So this like... <laughs> the you keep going, you stuff. keep going. <laughs> I you write stop. every day, you know, I'm, I'm always writing. It's like, if I don't write, I'm like, I don't know, destroying the neighborhood or something. I, I have to, I have yeah, to do yeah, it. Yeah, it yeah, keeps yeah. me um, grounded. Well, that's good. I mean, that's good to hear because you hear a lot of people. Like, I think it was uh, Roger Daltrey made a comment the other the other month. He said, you know, what's the point of, of writing and releasing a new Who album? No one buys them anymore. But, you know, a lot, a lot of people were saying, but isn't that what you do? Be creative, write music, release it, regardless of whether a million people listen to it or 100,000 people listen to it. Yes, that is my reason for getting up in the morning. I mean, more, more so than being a singer or a player, it's, it's being a, a writer, composer. That's what I do. That's what I need to do to, you know, get through my day and make sense of my world and, uh, and, and those who are in it. Yeah. So I don't, it doesn't matter to me if you have one well, person. I, I agree with that, Dave. Right or, And I think Ian Gillen said yeah. the same thing. He goes, I don't care if, you know, that's what we do. We release music. That's what we create music. We create albums. That's what we do. And, and that's yeah. who we are. And that, we'll continue to do that. So hats off to you on that. The first two albums, Virgin Steel Thanks, and man. Guardians of the Flame. Do you have the masters? Are you going to remix these guys, or have they been remixed? I don't think they have, right? No, the uh, the first one did, was able to do some remixing with what was left of of the original master because it, it got a little, you know, shy over uh, over uh, time. But Guardians, yeah, I actually uh, baked baked the actually have to bake the tapes. I baked the actual tapes in the convection oh, yeah. oven, brought them into the digital domain, so I could actually remix that record if I uh, want to and if I've got the um, the time to do it. Yeah, I, I may do that as part of the re the uh, reissue when we do it. I would like to actually do that. We'll see. Like I did with uh, uh, Vision Eden. I gave the uh, the original mixes remastered and I did uh, brand new mixes, the Barbaric Romantic mixes when we put that out, which I, I, I liked a lot better. So maybe, maybe yeah. that might go that way. Yeah, that, that was, I, I thought that was great how I loved those remixes of that record. I thought that was a, you know, an, an improvement, really. I mean, I thought I thought it made it even better. I, I, thought, I thought it needed it because when we did it, I was not really happy. That was the first album that we had uh, tracked in our own studio. And then we brought it to the studio where we normally were. And the guy who was the engineer, a lovely guy, he's a friend of mine, all that, but he didn't really give it the... Uh, uh, time of day that it that it needed there. I think he was a little upset we hadn't uh, done it there. So, um, yeah, it needed a second visit. Are, are uh, the lines of communication still open, or have they been open with Jack Star? Maybe he could contribute something, or in the future. Uh, uh, no, no, we don't really. I haven't spoken to Jack in oh God. It's been like at least twenty years or more. I haven't spoken to him. No, you no. got you guys are two type any, A characters, I, I think. You're just he's got a vision and you got a vision. And is that what it was at the end of the day? Uh no, it wasn't that simple. Uh uh, there were some other issues along the way. And we had we had actually remet and did a few things. I ended up doing production on one of his albums, No Turning Back. And um we ended up getting together and doing these things that we called the uh, sacred demos in the 90s after somewhere around the uh, marriage era you know, in that point. Uh, but then a few other things went on that I really didn't like. And um, um, so we didn't uh, we didn't speak or work together you know, after that. I, I have no you know, uh, ill feelings or anything like that. I'm just I'm just you know, we've moved into another direction. And uh, that's so long ago. And, you know, I was. I don't know if people, everyone knows this, but I was working with Edward before Virgin Steel. We've been playing together since like 15 years old. So I'm like, people bring that up. I'm like, you know, the guy, 
you know, was in the band for two records. I wish him well and whatever he's doing, but uh, I'm not really interested in going back there. I've, I've got, Edward is really like perfect for what, for what I'm doing. You know, he, he's really amazing in that. Not to say, I'm not saying anything bad about Jack. He's a great guitar player as well, but Edward, like, he doesn't need to have written the song to want to give it his all. Like, I remember when I wrote, for example, I wrote, I will come for you. And I played it for him on the piano. And he was just like, like excited beyond belief to just want to do the riff and, and be, you know, be on it. So that's for me as a, as a writer, that's, that's, a, that's a gift. I mean, it's beautiful that he's, he's like that. And, uh, you know, and personally, we get along very well. So it's a, uh, it's been a win-win situation. So I, you know, it fits I, I, well. That's what you're trying really to say. It just fits well. That's yeah, yeah, there's no need for me to, uh, to you know, to go to go back into ancient times. Right. I guess you could say, you know. But I wish Jack all the best in whatever he's doing. I don't know what he's doing. I don't really follow him. Uh, it's not a slight. I just don't really follow much of, of of a lot of things. I'm just too busy doing my own stuff, you know. So I miss a lot of. Uh, You're things writing an album a week. Out. You're too busy writing an album every week. <laughs> I'm writing. I'm listening. I'm listening about rough mixes. Is that good? How's that sound? What's that all about? So, you know, so tell us. So, so okay, we we got Edward Persano Persono on this album, right? Who else is on this album? Am I pronouncing uh, it right? Joshua. Joshua. <laughs> and, and, and of course he's what he does guitar as well is that it he plays he's like our seven and eight string guy he plays he likes those instruments well edward is the uh six string guy okay and josh has also done on the road he's done mostly bass uh he's also played seven string on 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 gigs as well um yeah, but on on this record, I played the bass. He has he just played some bass on some of the records. He did some bass on Book of Burning and a few bits here and there. Usually, it's not, it's down to like me and Edward doing the bass. But these days, it's it's mainly me doing it because I really enjoy doing it uh, more than he does. He likes doing it now and again, but uh, I love doing it. Okay. Right. The um the cat is you know just going back to the catalog a little bit. I mean, Virgin Steel has been so many things over the years stylistically and you know right up right up to what you're doing today um has the is this the direction you see the band continuing to go in or is is anything fair game direction wise could we could we potentially get another life among the ruins type of record like a rock and roll record or is do you feel the the style of the last two records is kind of the sound of virgin steel right now I think uh, well, the next record uh, is probably more in the vein of of, of Dionysus, like that. Uh, maybe it's um, it's a bit more goth, than some, but it, that remains to be seen because I, which what what songs are actually going to be on it from my various collections of songs that I'm writing will remain right. to be seen. But I think it would be safe to say that it'd be more like the uh, the new rap, new album that's coming out. Um, we did a little bit of of of. of uh, revisiting that life among the ruins sound on um, some of the songs on the the Ghost Harvest record. So you know there may be some of that in future because I like living there. There is this would be probably the third thing out after Dionysus. Uh, I've written some stuff that's maybe more uh, sort of like that in in that's not necessarily so much, but maybe the way it would be presented on record because i've written some stuff that's could be very stripped down like the first zap album kind of a thing you know which which doesn't yeah. necessarily want having um uh the extra like uh, choirs and all that sort of stuff it's written for that other sort of style but it's still bombastically heavy so what happens when it's actually fully tracked and whatnot i just sketched with the uh piano you know uh like a few weeks ago so we'll see how it ends up cool cool c c going back into the catalog age of consent when you look back in today's world versus the day when it was released right i mean the world has changed right i mean mm -hmm. could an album like that be released today or is it uh, uh, i guess that's my question i would like release it yeah you would, you're that daring okay but uh, I yeah i mean it. i'm for I, that. I, 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 Absolutely, and, good, oh. and I, I say good for David because that's a that's a kick-ass record, and the world needs more kick-ass records like that. <laughs> that's what I say. Cool, cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I got no beef with the record when we first issued the record. I didn't like the, the running order because they really wanted it to go for like that sort of like 
I guess that was the era of Jovi and and Molly and and, and Rat and all that stuff, and and uh, so they tried to make the record more like you know uh, on the wings of the night and and that sort of thing, you know, cry forever. So when we reissued it, I was like, no, no, it should have been like this. Open up with the burning of Rome, and let, it, let it roar, that sort of thing. And then I added those extra songs like uh, Perfect Mansions and Serpent's Kiss, which are the really sort of like boost the oomph of, of the record. So. That was yeah. nice to have done. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I think that's kind of become the definitive version of the record as the years have gone on. And yeah, you, you know, it's yeah. actually rare. It's actually rare to bump into someone that, that doesn't know that version. They, you know, they go, you show them the original version. They're like, wow, where are all the songs? You know, so <laughs> it's, it's kind of it's kind of cool how I mean, again, like I do think it's an important part of the conversation when I do say the catalog because you have reinvented and almost George Lucas style, you know, you've reinvented some of the old, some of the older records in a good way. It's true, in a good way, yeah. yeah thanks, I, I really appreciate that. And uh, it's, it's nice for, to have noticed that. And it's, you, I wonder sometimes, is, is it going this way or ahead or people get it? But when, when I get this kind of feedback, I, I know I'm on the right road with that. Uh, that's, you know, that's because as I said earlier, I, I'm really, uh, writer so i want i want to i want to just kind of if you if you give me to be creative i'm gonna i'm gonna take it that's that's why i'm i'm uh breathing that's why i'm doing what i'm doing yeah cool, tell man. me about awesome. tell me about uh, the early days like so you know I, I know you've talked about this before but a lot of people haven't heard it like the metallica and the queen's right compliments in the early days of you know how they sort of you know were i guess motivated, I don't know, or inspired, maybe that's the right word, by, you know, your your music in the early days? Uh, well, did fan letter from Metallica uh, all those years ago, they liked Children of the Storm from the first album. I think they probably were aware of it from the uh, US Metal Volume 2 record that it was on, the Mike Varney thing about, you know, those ages ago, because yeah. I think they were on it as well. Uh, and Queen's Strike, we were working with a distributor when we were doing the first record uh, called Dutch East India Trading. And they then formed the label called Mongol Horde, and we did uh, Guardians with them in the States. But the uh, Queen's Strike management and those guys, uh, they were aware of us and heard the record, and they also uh, wrote us very nice little back, back then. I think, actually, we introduced them to uh, Dutch East India, which then put out their, their EP. I think that's what happened. So that's how far it goes back, right? That goes back to, like, right before they released their EP, correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think we had heard, like, the, what they uh, had or whatever it was, and was, oh, yeah, these guys are great. Yeah, sure. Yeah. That's cool. Giles? Cool. Well, I mean, I, you know, I, we've, we've covered a lot of ground in a very short space of time, you know, and it's obviously we, we could get into a whole ton of different, you know, topics and things like that. We could go through every single album, but you ain't got the time. But I, I think it's it's great. There's a, there's a great new record. Uh, it sounds like Thanks. there's a lot more, a lot more music, you know, on the horizon. There's a lot of stuff people can delve back into, including like the five disc, correct me if I'm wrong, it was a five disc box set that came out a few years back. There's probably a lot of stuff that people can still discover. So that's that's great. You know, it's like the catalog just keeps on presenting new opportunities for fans to listen and to jump on board. So um Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And now 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 yeah, there's some live shows on the horizon too. Live shows and also some more videos. Uh we the lyric video for the opening track uh, was that came out two days ago. And I've actually done we've done like a sort of a uh performance still clip video for that as well which will be released when the album is out and there are a few other other videos for the album that we're uh we're working on getting out there for for the week that we're a little bit after when the album is finally released um maybe there'll be another movie style documentary thing like we did about the gothic voodoo album and uh visions of eden and the seven devils box set as well so we like we like the visual front so uh, there'll be more things go going on and i don't want to wait um too many years before the next record comes i'd like to get the next record out within like two years if we're able to do it because the music is there it's just a matter of just okay we're just going to dive in and just do it and uh i got i'll sing it all and uh i've actually got some vocals on some of the stuff so yeah you know, it's it won't be uh, that that uh, difficult what always takes the longest is the mixing because 
pause and the mastering. Because hear it one way in my brain, in my head, and then to try to bring that out into the light of day and the dark of night is always the tricky bit. And I'm always like, it's not right yet, it's not right yet. And then I go back in there and uh, I'm relentless about it. And that's the time I, 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 I have my my passion. <laughs> <laughs> my suffering, right. but, but, but I am relentless, so I get it. I get it. Yeah, I keep going until uh, until I'm able to uh, get a closer proximity to that. It's never exactly what I hear, but it's it's it gets closer. <laughs> David, on, on a last note, in one sentence, describe the sort of musical direction on this album for the people who don't haven't heard it. I guess. Okay, sure. I would say it's a barbaro romantic epic style record in the uh, tradition of records like House of Atreus, Invictus and such, uh, but with another uh, another string to the bow added. Yeah, another a few more arrows in the uh, quiver goes in another direction. I think it's, it's, uh, it's maybe the most violent record we've done, both uh, lyrically, musically, conceptually, and definitely vocally, you know, I just, I did approach, I mean, I always approach each record like it's gonna be like the last song I'm ever gonna sing, each one, but, I really threw caution to the wind and, and no, had no regard for life, limb, or, or functioning the next day on, on any of it. So I just wanted to just really nail nail something that uh, made Dionysus come alive and make the story breathe, you know, and show his uh, his uh, his passion, his frustration, his anger, his love, his hate, his everything. All right. On that note, The Passion of Dionysus, out June the 30th on Steam Hammer SPV. Thank you very much. David DeFay. Charles. Thank you, brothers. Appreciate right. it. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Cool, man. Have a nice night. All right. Have a Take great care. weekend. Be well. Okay. Bye-bye.